Hi everyone, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about alternative power wheelchair driving methods today. Today we're going to focus on proximity switches. Now proximity switches, let me grab one here, like this guy here, uh, are a electronic switch versus a mechanical switch. And these are most commonly found in the head array, a very common alternative driving method. But we can use them in other applications as well, particularly underneath a tray. So let's talk about switches for just a second. This little AbleNet jelly bean switch is a mechanical switch. I have to reach out, activate it, and that requires some travel. It also requires force. And when I hit this, you can hear there's a nice little click, gives me some auditory feedback. As opposed to an electronic switch like this proximity switch, where I do have to travel to it, but I do not have to use any force to actually activate it. Uh, it is a capacitive switch, and in total layman's terms, I'm not an engineer, that measures our capacity to conduct electricity. So if I come within the activation area, it's going to activate. So again, this is often placed within a pad, such as this one, that I might activate by turning my head. That's often part of the head array. But we can also place these within tray. So this particular tray is from Stealth Products. It's called their Eclipse tray. And this one here is hollow. So I can place the switches within this. Mount, sorry, it's a little loud. Mount this to a swing away assembly and it can just flip up out of the way when I'm not using it. Or I can place it in a more traditional full size tray as well. Uh, the switch now is within this. The top of the tray doesn't activate it because it's not conductive as long as it's made of a non-conductive material like this is, plastic. And the client now has to simply slide their hand over that location. Whereas if I had a mechanical switch on top, I have to come up and over that switch surface. And that's hard for a lot of the clients we work with, particularly people with abnormal muscle tone. Whereas some of those clients can slide over a location pretty readily. Now it's important I have some type of cue on this surface so I know where in the world that switch is hiding underneath here. I could put stickers on top, but uh, I work with a lot of children. They really like those stickers. They might look at the stickers instead of where they're driving. So instead, I often put Velcro on top, the loop sign, and I'll stick that on so that as someone's driving, they feel that tactile feedback that tells them, oh, that's the switch, and they head off in that direction. And I can have a switch here for forward, left, right, and reverse or reset. So these switches are typically adjusted by a very microscopic screw here, which can be a little tricky. You need a screwdriver that's like for eyeglasses to adjust the activation distance. Uh, these are made by a number of companies, Stealth, ASL, Switchit, and Movis. Uh, Movis's proximity switches are unique in that they are only activated above and to the sides of the surface of the switch, not underneath and can be adjusted digitally through programming rather than this little screw. When these are adjusted, we're adjusting how close do I need to get to the switch before I activate it. <clears throat> it's kind of like adjusting, except for the Mobus ones, a big spear around this, and it gets bigger or tighter around the actual switch. If it's too big and these switches are placed in a row next to each other for various directions of driving, they can actually activate each other. Now when they are activated, there's a little light on most of these that lights up to let you know it's activated. And the nice thing is you can take the chair out of gear, for example, and keep playing with that activation distance to make sure that the switches aren't activating each other and that they're a good distance for the client. Typically you're going to adjust it so it activates as soon as the client's hand is over that location touching the tray. Keep in mind if the activation distance is very large, since this is often on a tray over someone's lap, the top of the thighs can actually activate the switch as well. So we want to get that activation distance just right for that individual. And it can be a really nice way of driving for someone who has fair control of their arms, but has difficulty getting up and over a mechanical switch. It will capture larger movements. If we're looking for something to capture very, very small movements, then we might want to look at fiber optic switches. And we'll talk about that in our next video. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks. Bye.